Okay, today's video is the periodic table and the ion, part two. In part one, we went over the definition of the ion, or what an ion is. We talked about the two kinds of ions and how you can determine their charges and where they are on the periodic table. In part two, we're going to go over some simple problems using ions and answer some simple questions using ions about ions and our periodic table. Now, speaking of the periodic table, this is what your periodic table should look like. You need to have this information written on your periodic table, which we went over in part one. You should have on here the most common ion, ionic charges for group one is plus one. For the group element, group two elements is plus two. For the group 13 metals, aluminum down is plus three. For the group 17 elements, fluorine minus one. All of the group 16s, minus two. The group uh, 15s, these three, minus three. So you know the most common charge on those metals and non-metals. I also put this stair step on my periodic table because that separates the metals, which are on the left, form positive ions, they lose electrons, and they form cations. We call those cations. The right-hand side, we have non-metals. They form negative ions because they gain electrons, and we call those anions. Okay, so you should have all of that information on your periodic table and out so you can answer the following question. So either get out your periodic table, which you wrote that stuff on already, or get out your periodic table, pause the video, and write all that information on your periodic table. Okay, now we can go through and answer the questions. The first question being, what is the most common um, ion of the element chlorine? What is its charge? How many protons, how many electrons does it have? So we're gonna look for chlorine on our periodic table we know that it's a number that right there, number 17. It's also a group 17 element, and its symbol is Cl. How many protons does it have? Well, the atomic number 17 tells us that it has 17 protons. Now, if it was neutral, it would also have 17 electrons because they would balance each other out, the positives and the negatives. But it's not going to be neutral. This is the ion. The most common charge on the ion is negative 1. That means it has to have 18 electrons, one more negative than positive, and you get a negative one charge. This is the ion symbol for the chlorine ion. What is the most common ion for calcium? What is its charge? How many protons and how many electrons does it have? Calcium, we'll notice, is number 20. Ca is the symbol. It has 20 protons because its atomic number 20 is 20, and that is the number of protons. Now, if it was neutral, it would form, it would have 20 electrons. The 20 positives and the 20 negatives from the protons and the electrons would balance each, each other out. But in this case, we know from our periodic table that calcium forms a plus two charge. It's a group two element. It forms a plus two charge. In order to do that, we have to change the number of electrons because that's how atoms become ions. We can't change the number of protons. So 20 has to stay. But we're going to get rid of 20 electrons, and we're going to put in there 18. That means it has two less electrons or two more protons. The protons being positive, two extras means it has a plus two charge. That is the ion symbol for calcium. Okay? So you need to be able to use your periodic table to get the protons, the atomic number, the charges that we wrote down on the periodic table. You need to know those in order to answer these questions. Okay, the next set of questions. We have an ion, it has 13 protons and 10 electrons. What is the overall charge on that ion? Now, all we care about is what is the charge. 13 protons and 10 electrons. We're just going to add that up. Plus 13, plus minus 10. 13 positives plus 10 negatives. You add those two together, you get plus 3. Okay? You have three more protons than electrons, three more positives than negatives, plus three. Now we have an ion that has nine protons and ten electrons. What's its charge? Well, we have nine positives plus minus ten electrons. Okay, we have more electrons this time, so we know it's going to have a negative charge. We have one more electron, so therefore it's minus one. That's the charge, okay? In one case, we had more protons than electrons, so we get a positive charge. In this case, we have more electrons than protons, we have a negative charge. Okay, last set here. We want the ion symbol for the ion that has 16 protons 
and 18 electrons. Well, protons tells us what element it is. That's the atomic number. Number 16 is sulfur, so we just write down S. Now, once again, we're going to add the protons and the electrons. Plus 16 plus minus 18, because the electrons are negative. That's minus 2. Sulfur has a minus 2 charge. That matches what we wrote down for the plus 16, excuse me, the group 16 elements. Okay, the last one, we want the symbol for the ion that has 27 protons and 25 electrons. Well, once again, the number of protons is the atomic number. Element number 27 is cobalt, so we write down CO. Now, once again, we're just going to add up the number of protons, plus 27, plus minus 25, because the electrons are negative, and we get plus 2, and that tells us that cobalt is plus 2. Now, we can't really confirm that from our periodic table, because cobalt is a transition metal, and it can form a couple different charges. It could be either plus 2 or plus 3, but in this case, it's plus 2. Okay? So we went through and we answered those questions. You should be able to answer those simple kinds of questions using your periodic table, the information you get from your periodic table, and how you would do that to determine the charges, the kinds of elements, and where they might be on your periodic table. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you found that helpful, you could give me a thumbs up or a comment in the comment section below. Please, only positive comments. Thank you very much for watching.